Okay, I think we're all set. Thank you. Well, uh, good day, everybody, and welcome to the Education USA session with NYU New York University Abu Dhabi. Our guest today is Justin Van Dyke. Uh, he's been coming to Bosnia Herzegovina for years now. And uh, due to the, this pandemic, he's unable to come. So he agreed. Thank you very much, Justin, to talk to us today um, about uh, one very, very interesting topic. We will be talking about common application. For students who never heard of it, well, you don't know what you're getting yourself into. <laughs> For students who know what they're talking, what, what I'm talking about and what Common App is, I hope you will have a chance today to get more information about it and, and how to better deal with it. Common Application is an application that used uh, to apply to a lot of Uni United States uh, colleges and universities, a lot. Um, it is a very uh, um, big form. It has a lot of things that, that need to be completed, uh, very comprehensive. And uh, if you saw in our announcement, once you know how to do a common app, you will be able to do any application in your life. And I'm, I'm actually still stand by, by, by what I said. Uh, so thank you, Justin, so much for um, talking to us. Um, today about common application and your school as well. Great. Thanks so much for the introduction. Um, as Alexandra mentioned, today I'm going to be covering the common app and the application process to New York University. In particular, I'll talk a little bit about uh, NYU Abu Dhabi, which is the campus I represent. Um, but before I get into any of that, I just want to acknowledge that, you know, as Alexandra said, you know, this is not a simple application, you know, this is not a simple process, um, but we don't want it to be intimidating to you. You know, it's, it's you know, can be big, but it's not difficult. Um, if you take the time and you use the resources available to you, uh, this is a really rewarding process. I also want to acknowledge that, you know, I'm doing this virtually and I'm not there in, in Sarajevo and, all the rest of the places to, to see you in person. Um, and that it makes it even harder to do this kind of application in the middle of a pandemic. I know that this has been hard for, for everyone. Um, and just to let you know that we are here for you in this process. If you've been impacted by the pandemic in any way, physically, emotionally, academically, let us know about it. Um, we are here to make sure that you can submit your best possible application. And there are places for you to tell us about all of these things. So we understand that, you know, there are probably sports that you couldn't play or activities that you couldn't undertake. Please know that you will not be penalized for this. Um, we understand this context. Um, so just know that you have this resource here and myself as a representative of NYU Abu Dhabi and also um, the Education USA Advising Network that they can all help you in this process. So before I dive in um, to the actual application process, I want to tell you a little bit about the university I represent, uh, New York University. I'm guessing for most of you who've heard of NYU before, it's this campus here, um, our campus in New York City. It's a very unique campus among US universities in that it's very urban. Um, this is really your campus here in the background um, around Washington Square and East Village in New York City. It's unique in that we don't have campus walls. It very much is an urban campus and we're you know, a part of the community of, of New York. And it was really designed and, and founded to be this university for all of the people in the city. Um, we like to say that we're both in and of New York. So not only are we located there, but we're a part of the cultural fabric of the city. So uh, it was really founded with this in mind, and this is kind of at the heart of, of the university. Uh, it is the largest private university in the US and also the most international one. Um, for the past five years in a row now, NYU has ranked number one in terms of the number of international students it has on campus. And it's also number one in the number of students that it sends to study abroad. So it's really exceptionally diverse in that sense. We also have a huge range of programs, pretty much any academic program you can think of, 
um, with the exception of, I believe, architecture and fashion design. So I apologize to the architects and designers on the, the call. There may be a few other places you could consider in New York, but in, in any case, you know, it's a big university that has um, a really unique position in the world. But this idea of being just in and of New York has grown to being in and of the world. So the other campus that we have, um, one of the other campuses, is the campus in Shanghai. So it's the same as the campus in New York in terms of the degree, but it's located in China and has a much stronger emphasis on East Asia and, and learning about culture there. So if you apply to NYU Shanghai and you're admitted, um, you know, you can study a wide variety of majors in the arts and sciences and humanities and business, um, but they also have a strong component with the focus on, on China. So if you, as a European student, come to study in NYU Shanghai, you're required to have a Chinese roommate in your first year. So this kind of cultural immersion begins from day one. And you're required to um, study Chinese, uh, Mandarin Chinese, across your four years of study, uh, so that you get a stronger foundation in the language. So in short, if you're interested in a US university, a US liberal arts and sciences curriculum, but also the opportunity to really learn about China in depth, this can be a really interesting program for you. Finally, the campus in Abu Dhabi, which is the one I represent, um, was founded uh, almost exactly 10 years ago now with a very special mission. The idea behind this campus was to kind of create a global honors college. So a small university campus that brings the best and brightest students from around the world to study an extremely diverse international um, student body to study in this international environment. We have students from 112 different countries on campus and no majority from any one part of the world. Uh, we also have an incredible set of faculty um, who are all specialists in their fields um, and really excited to work with undergraduate students and involve them in their research from the beginning. Most class sizes are around 10 or 15 students maximum, so you do really get to work with your professors as peers in this aspect. And we also have really generous financial support. Um, we meet full demonstrated financial need. Um, so whatever you need to enable you to attend, um, we, can, we can provide you with that. So New York, Abu Dhabi, Shanghai, these are kind of like the three motherships. These are the three main degree granting campuses to which you can apply directly. Um, so it's you know, the same degree, um, same university in a sense. But of course, each one is a little bit different. As I mentioned, each one kind of has a different flavor. Um, and it's really not a random decision to, to have the university campuses in these, in these places. Um, but all three of these cities really are at a crossroads, both geographically and culturally, uh, for their respective parts of the world. Um, they're idea capitals. They're places where we want to give students the opportunity to use as a base to explore the world. Um, so you can have your home campus in these cities and then go out and spend semesters at some of NYU's other academic centers. In all of the other cities you can see in this slide, we have smaller academic centers where you can spend maybe one semester or a January term. So unfortunately you can't go to Buenos Aires and do a full four-year bachelor's degree, but maybe you'll choose to go there for three weeks in January um, in between semesters, or maybe you'll go and spend your full spring semester in Berlin. Um, but what I want to emphasize is that with all of these sites, you're taking NYU classes with NYU professors and classes that are a part of your, your major and your curriculum. So you don't have to worry about transferring credits or worrying if your financial support will move with you. It's all part of the same university. So from now on, I'll shift to talk a little bit more about the uh, application process itself. But if this is something that excites you, uh, do make sure to, to reach out to me. I'm going to put my contact information at the end um, and I'm happy to continue the conversation with you and help you understand the prospect of this um, really unique university and, and life-changing prospect. So um, please don't hesitate to, to contact me and, and discuss more about this. And of course, we can answer more university specific questions at the end as well. So now I'll go ahead and launch into the application process. And what I want to do today is I'll give you a list of the things that are commonly requested by US universities when you're applying um, that you can see here, but then I'm going to actually jump over to the Common App and share my screen so you can see exactly where you can put all of this information. 
So one thing that I should clarify um, with NYU is that when you apply, as I said before, you can choose between three different campuses, but NYU is one university in the Common App. So you'll just select New York University, and then you can specify which campus you're applying to. You can indicate your campus of primary interest, so your main campus that you're applying to. But also, if you genuinely feel an interest and a connection to a second or even all three campuses, you can express that interest. Um, but with one caveat, I just want students to know that you know this isn't just you know checking them all off and saying mm, maybe one of these universities will give me a place. Um, that's not the idea behind this. Um, we want to see that you really demonstrate your interest and and show a personal connection to the campuses that you're applying to. Um, and I'll talk a little bit more about that when I talk about the essays. Um, furthermore, you'll also have to submit transcripts, so your grades from your last three or four years of secondary school. Um, a lot of universities also require some kind of standardized test. This can be typical things like SAT and ACT or national exams. Uh, for NYU this year, we are test optional. This means if you don't have access to an exam or you take an exam and you're, you feel your results don't reflect your, your true academic abilities, then you do not require, you are not required to submit a standardized test. Um, you will, your application will not be impacted in a negative way if you choose not to submit a test. Um, we will just evaluate your application by looking at all of the other things in it. So just that's one important thing to keep in mind if you're applying to NYU and to any US university. So look at their, their testing policy and um, really make sure that you're you know, putting together your best possible case and only submitting the things that, that reflect you in, in the best light. And, and we'll talk more about this as we, we go along. We also need uh, letters of recommendation. There are two that are required, one from a counselor um, or a pedagogue or a school psychologist or headmaster or some official from your school who can take on the role of sending us this ed official information like your grades and your test scores and letters of recommendation. Um, you also need a second letter of recommendation from a teacher. So someone who's had you in the classroom. It could be you know, your English teacher or a biology teacher, you know, really whoever you feel, well, someone who has really good things to say about you, obviously, um, but make sure that you, you know, um, choose someone that you know well and is willing to take the time to, to write this letter for you. Uh, and again, I'll talk more about this as we get over into the Common App. Um, and finally, um, we also, for students who apply to NYU Abu Dhabi, have a virtual candidate weekend where you get to have conversations with current students and faculty and take sample classes and really get to see what uh, this university is like um, more in depth. Um, so this is something that is uh, required for finalists. It's not a guarantee of admission, but it's the, the last part in, in the process. The last thing I'll talk about here before I move on to the um, Common App itself is the uh, early decision versus regular decision deadline. So for NYU, we have two decisions, the early decision, um, which um, the obvious difference is that you find out the results of your application early. So for example, if you apply on November 1st, then you'll receive your results by mid-December. If you choose to apply early on January 1st, then you'll receive the results by mid-February. And finally, if you apply on regular decision, you receive the results uh, around April 1st. So um, it's a little bit longer than regular decision. The other major difference between these deadlines is that if you apply early decision, it's a binding deadline. What this means is if you apply early decision, you're making a commitment to attend the university if we offer you a place. So it's kind of your way of saying, you know, this is my number one school, this is my dream school. If you'll have me there, I'm coming 100%. Um, it just lets us know that, you know, you're enthusiastic and we can count on you to come um, if we offer you a place. Um, so really, it's up to you to figure out, you know, what's, what's a good match for you. Um, it's a personal decision for all students. Um, one thing to note about the Abu Dhabi campus in particular is that it is very competitive and we admit most of the class, more than 50% of the class, um, during the early decision deadlines. Um, so because of this, it's a bit more competitive during regular decision, not because it's harder to get in, but just because there are fewer places. So 
again, if you're applying to this competitive campus, it's important to keep in mind that um, um, the, the early decision deadline, if, if it's really your, your number one choice. So with all that being said, I'm going to jump over now to the actual Common App and we can really dive in deep and I can point out um, some specific things uh, about the application itself. Um, if you have questions now, feel free to go ahead and put them into the chat box um, and I'll make sure that I address them as I go along through the application itself. So this is the Common App website. Once you've created your account, you'll be able to go to College Search and then search for New York University and then add it to your list of colleges. And it will show up here in the dashboard. Then you'll notice here that there are two different tabs. There's one for my colleges. So that's the list of questions specific to the universities that you're applying to. And then you have the tab that's the Common App. Um, the name Common App kind of hints at, at what it is, that it's an application that's common to a large group of US and some international universities. And the idea behind this is that you can submit one application to multiple universities. So all of the universities that you want to apply to who are in this system. So it's important to keep in mind that any information that you put in this common tab will go to all of the universities you're applying to. So it's important to not put any university specific information there. You know, if you're talking about, you know, what a great, you know, track and field athlete you are and how excited you are to, to do that at, at NYU, if you're applying to another university, they're going to see that as well. So that might not be um, such a great thing. So just keep this in mind when, when you're applying. When you open up the Common App tab, you can see here along the side, um, there's several different uh, tabs. I won't go into depth into depth with all of them, but I do want to point out some things that may be a little bit confusing for international students. Um, your name, hopefully, is not one of those things. But um, you'll see here there are some questions on things like demographics um, that is more geared to uh, U.S. audience. So, um, of course, like armed force status and different ethnicities. Um, if you don't know how to answer these questions or you would prefer not to, you don't have to answer them. In fact, as you go through the Common App, you'll note that questions that are mandatory, that are required, have a red star next to them. So if you do see a question and you don't have an answer and it doesn't have a red star, then you can move along to, to the rest of the, the application. Um, so for this section, you just have to say yes, that you've completed this to your satisfaction and then move on. And as you click continue, it will automatically save your, your entries and move on to the next section. Under geography and nationality, again, it will ask you, you know, the number of years you've lived in the US. For most of you, that will be, you know, zero. So that's fine to put. Um, your citizenship will be non-US country. And then it asks if you hold a US visa. Um, this is not something you necessarily have to know ahead of time. Um, it will depend on you know, the college that you're applying to. Obviously for NYU Abu Dhabi or NYU Shanghai, since you won't be studying in the US, you won't need to, to complete this. Um, but if you are, are applying to a US school, you can say, yes, you in, intend to apply for um, an F1 visa. That's the typical one. But um, again, this isn't a required question. You can work with um, your, your advisor um, or again, an Education USA advisor to help you answer this question. The final section here is the Common App Fee Waiver. So for students for whom paying this fee would be a financial burden. So if you just don't have the, the extra money to pay for the application fee, you can ask for a fee waiver. It's a very straightforward process. All you have to do is click yes, that you would like to request this fee waiver. And then you see there are a lot of other different programs here that really aren't applicable. So you only need to click this last one and just say that someone from your school will acknowledge that your request is valid, um, that you, you are um, requesting this in, in good faith. 
and then write your name here and um, click continue. So that's all you need to do to apply for, for the fee waiver if you're requesting this. The next tab is the education system. This is where you will type in your school name. So we know which high school you attend. We have a lot of schools um, in here. So one thing I encourage students to do is make sure that you do find your exact school name. Um, if you search, obviously, with if there are a lot of different names, sometimes it won't show up correctly. Um, but do a little bit of a search and see if you can find your school, just because if you don't, then you have to manually enter the information and then maybe it will create a duplicate. So um, try a few different names. I think even like if we search, so this isn't showing up. So try a few different things. Um, and just kind of see if you can find your school listed somehow. Actually, Justin, uh, those are those three schools are the only schools who are listed in, in Bosnia. Uh, we are not listed ah, okay. usually. Ah, yeah, interesting. yeah. Yeah, so we're in usually not system, listed. We do um, have these. Yeah. So I think there may be a disconnect. So yeah, in that case, if it's not listed for you, then go ahead and um, enter your school's information. If you will have some kind of interruption, you know, let's say you're taking a year off or taking a gap year, um, you know, this is not necessarily a bad thing. This can, you know, if you take a gap year, it can also be a positive thing if you go and do something exciting and learn something new or accomplish something amazing. Um, but do give us the context here. So if you choose, if something has impacted you, whether you're graduating early or you're taking time off, let us know about this and make sure to give the full context uh, in the box below. Um, this is something I'll be saying a lot today. Always make sure to give us the context. You know, don't just click something and leave us wondering, you know, why this happened or why you did a certain thing. Um, these boxes are always a chance for you to give us a little bit more information about you know, your academic and personal journey and, you know, why you made the choices you made or, you know, did the things that you did. Um, it will help us to, to understand you a little bit better. If you've switched schools, so if you maybe, you know, attended one school for the first two years of high school and then switched, um, you can indicate that under other high schools and it will be the same process again. You just fill in your school's information and um, also explain why, um, you know, if you, um, went from, you know, moved from one school to a boarding school, or you got a scholarship to go to another kind of school, you know, it's good to let us know about that, you know, that can be an impressive thing. So make sure to, to provide context there as well. In the colleges and universities section, this is where you can put information about any college programs or university programs you participated in. You know, it could be a summer program or, you know, a, a course that you're taking in addition to high school. Uh, again, you know, it's not required, but if this applies to you, this is the place where you can tell us what exactly it was and what courses you took. Under the grade section, um, I have to say this is the section I probably get the most questions about because immediately you start to see a lot of words and concepts that don't generally apply to all international schools. So don't panic when you get here. We don't expect you to know what quintile class rank reporting is, or you expect you to have a GPA scale. Um, none of this is required. So if you don't know the answer to this, um, you don't have to put this information here. Um, we will also be asking your, your school counselor or pedagogue, whoever that is, to provide us with this information from their part. So. Um, if you don't know the answers to this uh, or you can't get them, no worries. You don't have to put the information here. This is all self-reported. And again, if you do know, if your, your teacher tells you, you can put in the information. It's the same thing for the next section. This is another self-reported section where you ask us to tell us what courses you're taking in the current year. This is just a way to give us a heads up and let us know um, so that we can see right when we receive your application, what courses you're currently enrolled in. Um, of course, the official report of this will still have to come from 
uh, from your counselor, or from, from a school official. Um, but if you do have this list, then you can go ahead and, and list which courses you're taking this year to, to give us a heads up. The next section is the honors section. And for most students, this is primarily an academic section. So a place to tell us about awards you've received for academic achievements over the course of your four years in secondary school. Um, so it can be also academic Olympiads or things like that, or any kind of honor that you've had. Um, and you can see here that you can put the name um, when you participated. Uh, this 9, 10, 11, 12 applies to the last four years of secondary school. So if your numbers come in a different order or you don't have 12 or something like this, just know that these are the last four years. And you can also indicate what level you achieve them on. Justin, from can here, you give an example, um, please, of the honors of anything that you saw from students uh, applications? What is it? What would be an example of honors? Yeah, sure. So it could be, you know, an award for being the best physics student in your school or winning an award in an academic Olympiad. Maybe you did like a language Olympiad or something like this. Um, you know, things that are, are for your academic performance for the for the most part. Um, for the rest of them, um, we can see them in the extracurricular or activity section, which I'll, I'll move to in, in, in just a minute. Um, in the following section, we have community-based organizations. Um, most of these organizations are based in the US, um, so there aren't very many that are international. But of course, Education USA is one of the big ones that, um, that is all over the world. Um, so, you know, from your contact with any of the advisors and staff at these locations, you can let us know about this um, and provide the contact information for the person that, that helped you, just to let us know that, you know, that you've gone out and you've taken advantage of these great, um, these great resources to help you with your application. The final section here is on future plans. So these, this section, um, just as another warning, um, is not a place where you are going to be stuck um, being an accountant. If you say this, this is not committing to be an accountant for the rest of your life if you put this information here. This is just a chance for you to tell us what you're kind of interested in, what you think you might want to, to do when you graduate from university. Um, if you don't know, that's absolutely fine. You can put undecided or just put something close to there. Um, it really won't have any impact on your application, but we're curious. We do want to have an idea of, of, of what you're interested in. Um, so feel free to, to fill this out if you have an, an idea of you know, what you might want to do. But of course, we have these great other and undecided categories if um, they don't fall into any area yet. The next section is on testing. Like the grade section in the other area, this is all self-reported information. So anything that you put here, you will also need to have sent officially. So for example, if you're choosing to have SAT scores sent, then those will need to officially come from the college board. Um, or if you're doing Cambridge or um, IB, those will be sent officially from your school. Um, but this is just to give us a heads up again, you know, because sometimes it takes a little bit longer to get the official results. This way we can look at them right as we start to evaluate your application. So if you do choose to submit one of these tests, again, you're not required to this year, um, but if you do choose to, um, you can submit, you can select here um, from these kinds of tests. And then you can see so for example, if you choose SAT, you can see down here, it will populate a field with SAT results and you can put them there. Again, it's not required for the standardized tests. Oops, move me along. So standardized testing is not required for NYU this year and for a lot of other US universities, um, but do make sure you do your research and find out what's required. Um, and again, this will go to all the universities that you're applying to. One test that is required this year is an English language test. So we need some kind of uh, 
English language testing result, we, ex we um, accept a really wide range, things like TOEFL and IELTS, also Duolingo English test um, we accept. In fact, we offer fee waivers for students who need an English language test and don't have one and um, for whom you know, the fee would be a financial burden. So um, if you need help with, with getting a test, you can just write to me and, and um, I can send you a fee waiver um, if you need a test and plan to take the Duolingo English test. So the next question here is for submitting national exams. Um, so for universities that accept um, the Matura, this is the place where you can put that information. NYU doesn't currently um, accept uh, the Matura from, um, um, as one of the standardized tests. So, um, uh, or the, the one from, from Bosnia and Herzegovina. So, um, you can still feel free to report these. It won't fulfill the testing requirement, but if you choose to, um, you can put these here if you have the results. Um, uh, you can also submit predicted results if you'd like to submit those, if your school um, has predictions for them. But again, it's not necessary or, or required this year. The next section is the activities section. So this is where we get to hear about all the kinds of stuff that you're doing outside of class. Uh, one thing I want to emphasize here is that I know a lot of students when they hear, you know, extracurricular activities, they automatically think, oh, you know, I have to be captain of the football team or class president or, you know, be an amazing dancer or an amazing musician. Um, and that's great if you are, if you have these very typical things. Um, but they can also be, you know, taking care of a little brother or sister or doing paid work or volunteer work. Um, this is a really broad category for us. So if you get to this part and you feel, you know, especially in this year that you're struggling to think of, you know, what you've done here, make sure to keep an open mind about it um, and think about the ways that you've participated in your community or really at its very simplest, how you've pursued things that you're passionate about and had accomplishments in those areas. So it doesn't have to be a huge world changing thing, but we just want to see that, you know, you have this interest and, and really thinking about your community and, and, you know, moving outside of just being doing what you're asked to do within the classroom. So keep that in mind as you complete this. You'll see below that you actually have space for 10 activities here. This is not a challenge to fill out 10 activities. I mean, if you have 10 great activities, good for you, but we don't expect all students to, to have a lot of activities, especially these days. We're much more interested in quality over quantity. So my first advice is to think of, you know, the activity or the accomplishment that you're most proud of and put this at the very top, put this as activity one and make sure, as I mentioned before, to give us some context around this. Um, you can see here, the student did, which is me, um, didn't do a good job of explaining what this is, you know, XYZ club. You know, this could be anything as, you know, when admissions is reading this, they really don't have an idea, you know, what this is. It's just a club and it consisted of meetings that the student kind of showed up to one time. Um, please don't write about your activities like this. You have all of these areas to share, you know, how you were committed to this and what you accomplished. So we want to see something more like activity number two, um, that, you know, you were a mentor and you here put a description of exactly what it is you did, you know, helping to mentor younger students on research projects. Um, and we also see that there was a real commitment here. You know, it wasn't just showing up to a club one day, but, you know, the student did it across all four years of their high school and also did it during a school break um, and really committed some time here. So this is much more impressive. Um, you know, the same thing goes if, you know, um, you know, if you put tennis there and just write tennis, for all we know, you just played a game of tennis one time, you know, what do you do? You know, that's not something that will impress admissions. But if you tell us that, you know, you coached younger students or you participated in some kind of tournament, that's going to be a lot more impressive and give us a better idea of, of who you are. Finally, as I mentioned before, it doesn't have to be these typical sports or academic activities. It can be family responsibilities. We know that um, in a lot of places in the world, there aren't, you know, 
you know, the possibilities to do these activities or there's no emphasis on them, or you have a lot of other things that you have to do besides these. So if you have responsibilities like this, if you're taking care of family members and, and doing these kinds of significant chores and, and helping out, um, you can let us know about this as well. Um, and when I say all of this, you know, this doesn't mean that, you know, let's say you really like to play guitar, you know, you're not any, in any big rock band, you haven't made a record or something like that. You know, it doesn't have to be huge. You can still tell us how much you like to play guitar, but, you know, maybe put it a little bit farther down in your list of activities. You don't have to um, put it at the very top. Um, it can also show us that you're well-rounded. You know, if you do a lot of different things, it can show us that um, you have varied interests in, in this sense. Um, so do make sure when you come to the section that you give us all of this detail and, and let us know who you are and, and um, what you've accomplished. The next section is the writing section. This is a really important section. This is really one of the most important parts of your application, and it can be really intimidating, and it's a really different kind of thing to do. Um, but I really want you to know that this is not a difficult thing to do. Um, I know that it can seem like it's really hard and it's a lot to do, but I promise you that once you have a plan in place and you think through it, not only is it easy, but it's also fun. It's something that can be really personally rewarding to do this kind of self-reflection and figure out how to tell the world who you are, what you're passionate about, what makes you, you. Um, I won't go into a lot of depth here just because I could probably talk for another hour just on the essay. Um, and also there are a lot of, of recordings and other sessions um, that I do on specifically on, on writing essays. Um, so I'll put links to this afterwards. Um, but do make sure that you don't come to this section the night before it's due and just write a really quick essay. Um, you do need to reflect on this and come up with a plan. So you'll see here that there are about six different options you can choose to respond to. Um, and what I generally encourage students to do is to see if you can come up with an idea for each of them, just kind of brainstorm and, and come up with you know, just a few lines or an idea of what you would say if you were responding to the question so that you give yourself a little room to explore and figure out which response will best serve this question. So this personal essay is something that is really unlike anything you've been asked to write before. I'm, I'm guessing for most of you in that it's not an academic essay. So this is not the place to tell us, you know, what an amazing math student you are or what an amazing um, biologist, biology student you are. Um, it's also not supposed to be a CV. You know, it's not a place to repeat things that we can, you know, already know about you or that you've put other places in your application. Um, in fact, this should be the place where you tell us something that we can't find out about you from the other parts of your application. So it should tell us something new. Um, and really show more of this personal side. So it can be and should be exciting, you know, a little bit more artistic and engaging and, and really kind of like making a self-portrait, you know, to give us an idea of who you are, how you see the world and, and, and what things you're passionate about. So it is a little bit more creative and, and reflective and, and you can spend a little bit more um, thoughts and, and kind of communicating who you are to us. Um, so, you know, at the end of the day, do make sure you spend some time and definitely revise this as well, you know, really think it through and, and figure out, um, you know, is this setting yourself, yourself apart? Um, the, really the thing that I always tell students is, so as I mentioned, the first one is this essay should tell us something new that we can't find elsewhere. And it should also set yourself apart from all the other students who are applying. So it should share something unique about yourself. Um, so, you know, imagine that you have, you know, you know, a twin or doppelganger who goes to the exact same school as you, who did all of the same activities as you, who got the same grades. Now imagine this person is also applying to the same university. What are you going to say that will make yourself stand out from this person? You know, what are these personal attributes and, and things about you that, that make you unique? Um, so when you think about this, that should be your concentration. Um, the, the point of this essay is not to, you know, come up with the very best answer ever anyone has ever written to this, this essay. Um, that's not the, the idea. 
Um, it's more like you've probably heard the saying before that um, it's you know more about the journey than the destination. So it's it's not about arriving at that exact place as much as as much as as much as it is about having this journey you know of self exploration and and kind of using this essay to tell us who you are. So do take your time and and don't rush through this um, when you're you're writing it. Finally, there's an additional information section. Um, so if there's anything that doesn't fit into the rest of the application, um, you can add it here. Also, there's a very um, uh, specific section here talking about COVID-19 and its impact. So if you've been impacted in any way, this is where you can tell us about it. Um, you know, it doesn't have to be, you know, like, you know, a really horrible story of, you know, being in the hospital and having severe, you know, medical condition because of the pandemic. Um, really, it can be anything. We know that people have been impacted in a whole variety of ways, as I said before, you know, not just physically, but emotionally and academically. So this is the place where you can tell us ab about that. Um, and I would really encourage you to use this space um, and not the personal essay to tell us about, about, you know, the pandemic, just because, you know, by its nature, the pandemic has, has impacted almost everyone in the world. So that's really not a unique subject at this point. So if you do feel compelled to, to tell us something about how the pandemic has impacted you, this is the place to, to do it. Um, finally, if there's anything else, let's say you had, you know, like a short CV that you wanted to upload or something else you wanted to share, um, you can put that information here. Um, also, if you're interested in, um, if you think you'll be studying something in the arts, uh, like the performing arts or, um, you know, music or visual arts or literary arts, we also have a separate um, program called Slide Room where you can upload a portfolio. So that's just something to know. Um, you know, you don't have to be applying to a music major to submit music if you're a musician. You can, you know, apply as a biology major, but also want to share your musical work. That's totally fine. Um, and you can find out more about that on, on the website if that's something you, you want to do. Finally, there's a section where you can give us a preview of your transcripts. Um, NYU does not require this, so it doesn't show up here, but um, it will allow you to manually type in the classes and you took in the grades that you received from, um, from your high school so far. Um, again, it's not required for NYU, so um, you can skip over this for, for us. So as I mentioned before, all of these things that we've talked about so far, the extracurricular activities, the grades, all of that goes to all of the universities you're applying to. And then in the My Colleges section is where you will have the questions that are specific to the universities. So you can see NYU shows up here. You can find this basic information, deadlines and, and the requirements, all of these kinds of things. And then under questions, you'll find things that are really specific to NYU. The big one being which campus you're applying to. Um, as I mentioned before, we ask you for your campus of primary interest. Um, so you'll indicate that here. And if you do feel like you genuinely have an interest in a second campus, you can put this here. Um, but we want to see that you're not just checking a box, but you've really thought it through and you have a clear idea of why you think you would be a good fit for that campus. I'll talk a little bit more about that in a second. Also, you can indicate your early decision plan here. So if you're applying early or regular decision. Um, you'll also indicate yes, that you plan to submit the CSS profile. This is the application for financial support. Uh, I mentioned at the beginning that we do have really generous scholarships. Um, so to be eligible for these scholarships, you are required to submit the CSS profile. This is very important. Also a somewhat complicated application. Um, I won't have time to cover it now, but also the Education USA Advising Centers will be able to give you more details about this, but do make sure that you also submit this separate application for financial support. And so the final section I'll talk about here um, is the academic section. So we ask you one more time, what major or academic area you're considering applying to? This does not commit you to this. 
Um, as you may have heard before, you know, the, one of the fantastic things about this liberal arts and sciences curriculum is you don't have to decide your major on day one or you know, even after you get on campus. Actually, you have up to two years before you're required to commit to this. So you know, whatever you put here is not going to, to bind you to study this specific thing but it gives us an idea of what you think you're interested in pursuing and can help start shaping this academic journey. If you don't know yet, it's perfectly fine to put undecided, um, but you can let us know the general area you think you might want to go in, whether it's art or engineering or some of these other fields. There are also questions about English language testing. Um, so we know if you'll be submitting an English language test also, if you'll be submitting a standardized test, um, so if you will, you can find a really um, big list here, even national exams. Um, but if you are not considering applying or submitting one, you can just click no. So it's really up to you. Finally, the other big important writing part of, of this application is the university specific question. And for NYU, this is a very simple, direct question. Why NYU? So why us out of all the other universities you could choose? Why are you choosing to apply to us and to our specific campus if you're applying to Abu Dhabi? And by the same turn, why you? You know, out of the tens of thousands of students who are applying to this university, what makes you in particular a really good fit for this? So it's important to think about this in depth, um, really do your research and find out you know, why you're applying, you know, if you can't think of a reason beyond, you know, that you saw it in a movie once, or you really love New York, or, you know, you know, simple things like this, then you need to do more research and, and find out um, these specific examples, you know, what kind of classes do you imagine taking? What do you imagine contributing to the university? Um, what kinds of activities do you imagine yourself doing? Um, so it's important to, to think through this and, and again, do your research. Um, and also make sure that you're making it personal. You know, don't just, you know, copy back to us. Definitely don't cut and paste. I've seen this before. Um, you know, what's on the website. Um, just make that personal connection and, and put it on, in your own words and, um, and really highlight the things that are important to you. You know, without fail every year, students will write and say, you know, I want to come to your university because it's ranked number one and blah, blah, blah. Great, you know. We know we're ranked number one for blah, 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 or whatever that is. But what we're much more interested in hearing is why we're ranked number one for you. You know, if you had your own ranking system of, you know, what the perfect university would be for you, um, what would be on it? You know, what attributes would be there? So like the personal essay, this is not something to just wait until the very end of your application until the day that it's due to, to think about. Um, as you go along, make sure you do this research for all the universities you're applying to and have a really clear personal motivation for wanting to apply to the university that you're applying to. So once you've completed all of these questions, ah, one more thing I'll mention here is the letters of recommendation. So under this next section, you will see that um, you have an area where you can invite your counselor. So again, this is someone like a pedagogue or a class teacher or headmaster, someone who can play the official role of submitting your official documents, test scores, and you know, general information about your school. Um, you can put their information in here. And um, once you put in their email and click send, then they will receive their own login to come in and add this information to your application. So do make sure that you know you contact this person and make sure they know that you're doing this and making sure that they know what to do and what is being asked of them. And definitely don't do it the night before you're submitting your application. You know, as soon as you're, you're sure you're going to apply, make sure you start this conversation. Uh, the same thing goes for your teacher. You know, when you're thinking about who's going to submit your teacher letter of recommendation, um, don't just wait a few more days before the application is due and say, hey, I want a letter of recommendation. Um, it's really important to reach out to this person and give them plenty of time to prepare and, and come up with information um, to, to write your letter of recommendation. I always advise students to, to you know, write a note and, and remind them, especially if it's not a teacher from this year or maybe it's a teacher from a year before, um, and just say, hey, would, I'm doing this, I'm applying to this university. 
would you mind writing a letter of recommendation and say, you know, as a reminder, these are the things that I did in your class. Um, this is what I'm really excited about. And also, you know, these are the accomplishments I've had, you know, since I was last in your class and, and, you know, gives them some things so that they know what to write their letter about. Um, so that can be a, a really helpful thing. Finally, there is an other recommender. So a third letter of recommendation. This is not required, but if you can think of someone um, who's observed you outside of the classroom, let's say, you know, an art teacher or a coach or, you know, a boss from work or a volunteer activity, you know, someone who's, um, who's observed you outside of the school context and kind of can give us this uh, additional um, perspective on who you are, that can be a great benefit to your application. So, you know, you have your counselor who's going to talk about how awesome you are overall. You can have your math teacher will, who will tell us what a math whiz you are. And then you can have your football coach who tells us, you know, about your leadership on, on you know, in playing sports. Um, so this just allows us to have a more well-rounded um, perspective on, on your application overall. So that brings me to the end of application. Um, hopefully, once you've completed all of these different parts and you have, um, um, have again, completed these, you'll see a submit button here that will allow you to go through and, um, and submit, review your application, and then finally submit it. Um, and the dashboard will allow you to monitor all these things as you go along. So you will be able to see what you've completed and what's still required. You can also monitor the progress of letters of recommendation. You can see if you know, your recommenders have submitted their, their letters yet. So I know this was a lot. I know this feels like a lot of things to, to complete. But again, at the end of the day, it's not a difficult thing to do. If you sit down and you work through it and you use all the resources, the advisors and, and your teachers, um, then this is not only an easy thing to do, but it really is something that can change your life. Um, so I really encourage you, if this has inspired you today, to go, you know, open your Common App account um, and write me an email, connect if this is something that excites you. Um, we're all more than happy to help you um, pursue this opportunity. Don't forget to put in the links that you mentioned. Yes, yes. So I'm going to throw some links in the chat now. And I think so. Let's see. Okay, just one second. Um, so I'll put some links to videos and also to my contact information. Um, please don't hesitate to reach out to me. Uh, this is what I'm here for. I'm here for to answer your questions personally and, and um, can have one-on-one -on -one discussions and help with all of those kinds of things. Um, so uh, yeah, feel free to reach out to me. Um, and I'm happy to take any questions now. Um, and of course, Alexandra, if you have any additional wisdom to impart or, or things you'd like to share, feel free to do so. Well, honestly, this is, as you said, this is a, a you know, a lot to chew on. <laughs> it is a big application, but I'm sure when people start filling it out, then they will have more questions. Right. Um, there might be I, one thing that I always tell students who work with me, if you never heard of it, whatever the Common App is asking you about, the percentage or uh, the ranking or something, if you never heard of it and you've been in our your Bosnian education for four years or fourth year of high school, I never heard of it, we don't do it. So just skip it. Yeah. <laughs> That's my grain of wisdom. <laughs> because, I mean, if we did, but we do don't, if we did, for example, if we, did, if we do have uh, rankings in our schools, students would know about it, yeah. right? Yeah. So, so it's not something, if, we do, if, you, if, if you find something unfamiliar, completely unfamiliar, we don't do it in Bosnia, just skip it. Very simple. <laughs> and for everything else that you said, Justin, they can contact us or other, other education advising centers in Bosnia or the rest of the Europe or rest of the world, um, you as well. But just kind of to depart from a topic, um, do you happen to have, because now this is, you know, COVID 
year and everything is online. Do you happen to have a very nice link to a virtual um, uh, virtual tour of NYU Abu Dhabi? Yes, I do. Um, actually, um, in this last part of the, the links that I put in, there's a YouTube playlist. Um, so if you mm -hmm. visit that playlist, the top one is a virtual tour. Um, and then below that, there are also smaller videos on like engineering or social sciences or arts. So you can dive in and, and see that and um, explore the campus a little bit more. Um, we also just had our um, 10th anniversary celebration. So on the website, you can also find videos. And there was actually a documentary made um, about the founding of this university. Um, and I believe, um, I haven't watched it all the way through, but I believe there's one Bosnian student that actually Alexandra and I met in, in Travnik many years ago, um, who's, yeah. who's a of that video, and who's now a Rhodes Scholar. Um, I can't remember now if he's completed his, his degree or not, but um, yeah, really exciting opportunity to look and see, you know, where this application can end up taking you. Great. Now I'm just asking because um, I know that people have less chance to travel now and maybe visit your school. And as I personally been there, <laughs> uh, I think it would be a great idea for people to kind of have a chance to have opportunity to kind of uh, uh, go and see it at least online. Now we are experienced in doing things online. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody is. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, I don't know if um, people here have any questions. Um, as my ma, I think that Alan is not here. Alan, it's his mother, I think, with us. So, uh, any uh, if anybody? I just yes. have just one question. Uh, I was wondering because you were sa you said at the beginning that you were recording this whole meeting. Uh, who can we reach for for the link so we can watch it again? Um, thank you. The link will be sent to you. Uh -huh. So okay, all the people who registered and came to the session, the link will be sent to you. Okay, thank you very much. That's my only question. Yeah. It's yeah, I know it's a lot, a lot, a lot to take in at this moment. So yeah, that's why we decided also to record it and have give people opportunity to watch it at least one more um, time before. Yeah. No more Great. questions? Um, I have one. <laughs> I'm, I'm not sure if I missed the information. Um, I'm just curious a little bit. We have the enrollment dates, uh, but I'm wondering when does the school year actually start since I saw that a lot of universities have start in spring or summer or and some start in fall next year. So since my school ends on 29th of April, I was wondering uh, what date should I start? Like, is there any date that is advised to start? And um, if there are any in general dates or I'm just a little bit curious. So for NYU, we accept students um, for fall entry. So that means you apply basically a year ahead of the time um, you wish to begin your studies. So students applying now, you know, deadline November 1st or January 1st and 5th, um, those students would expect to begin in fall 2022. Um, and it's generally the end of August, early September when, when classes start. Um, and maybe Alex, you can talk in, in general about um, the kind of timing with the you know, Bosnian school calendar versus US universities. Yes, in general, um, American schools start uh, sooner than Bosnian schools. Uh, in general, um, especially Bosnian universities. In Bosnia, universities start in October. Definitely not the case in the US. You, in the US, academic year starts in the second half of August. Depends, you know, which date, but second half of August. Uh, there are some schools that also accept students mid-year. Basically, that students can start uh, their education in January, so at the beginning of the spring term, or as we say, letni semester. But that's not very often, number one. And number two, if you do need financial aid, it is not advised for you to apply January in, to start 
to start your education in January, because at that time, usually financial aid is already given, available uh, financial aid is already given to other students who actually started at the, at the beginning of the academic year in, in August or, you know, um, yeah, in August, uh, fall, fall semester or uh, Zimski semester. So that's, yeah, that's, the, that's the difference. And as Justin said, a lot of schools uh, as, his, as his have application deadlines now, uh, now when you are in your fourth year of high school or final year of high school. Uh, some schools do have application deadlines um, in the spring. So to start, to start with your education in August. Uh, some schools do have application deadlines in the spring, like March, April, even throughout the year, June, June July. But please note, uh, and I'm telling you this from my own experience working as advisor for 12 years, if you do need financial aid, those schools that have later deadlines, like March, April, June, July, do not usually have uh, financial opportunity and means to provide you with the full scholarship. So um, the later the deadline is, the less money you will likely be given from them. So th this is not the rule. Just to say, this is not the rule. There are always exceptions, but it's usually the case. I don't know if I answered your question or not. Yes, you did. Thank you very much. Uh, both You're of welcome. you, thank you. Great. And I guess we can go ahead and draw it to a close. Um, I'll leave the session open. Um, so if you need time copying the links or clicking on those, or if you want to just ask questions one on one, I'll, I'll hang on a little bit. Um, but otherwise, I just want to thank Alexandra for this opportunity. Um, as always, it was a pleasure talking with you and, and sharing this university and, and this process with you and, and uh, your audience. No, thank you, Justin. I really hope to see you again very soon in Sarajevo. Yeah, I really sure. do. It'll be great to do this a lot live. Yeah, in I definitely miss it. Yeah. Great. We'll have a wonderful day. Um, have a wonderful application journey. And I hope to hear from you all in the near future. Thank you. Thanks. Bye bye. Bye. Uh, I'm at school currently, so I'm going to go back to my classes. Okay. Thank you very much for the opportunity. <laughs> Goodbye. Bye. You can stop recording, Justin. Uh, okay. <laughs>